watch that over on the BBC Sport website, but from me and the team, for now, goodbye. The BBC World News Komla Dumo Award is about excellent journalism. It's about finding that talent on the continent that can help us tell the African story wholly and widely. Winning the award for me is a great honor. It also opens up huge doors in terms of what you can do with your career. It gives you a continental platform. The winner of this award gets an opportunity to come and spend three months in London and work with some of the world's best journalists. This is the stage that would elevate their journalism. My scripting has improved. My interviewing skills have become better. Any journalist worth their salt should be applying for this award. You should apply for this award because of the platform the BBC offers. My whole idea of storytelling has been turned on its head being here at the BBC. Whatever it is that you have may be what the BBC is looking for. You need to take this opportunity seriously and apply. For more details on how to apply, please visit bbc.com forward slash Komla Dumour. Hello, welcome to BBC News. I'm Kasia Madeira. Our top stories. Two, one, zero. Scientists in Britain make a major new advance in the quest to generate energy from nuclear fusion. What we've managed to demonstrate inside JET is that we can create a mini sun, the right kind of mini sun, hold it there for a sustained period and get really good performance levels. Protests spread across India and beyond against a ban on the Muslim headscarf in some colleges in one southern state. Canadian police threatened to arrest lorry drivers who've shut down central Ottawa as anger at mandatory vaccines spread. And two years of COVID restrictions are set to end in England. Rules are also eased in parts of Europe and the US. Hello and a warm welcome to our viewers on PBS in America and around the globe. A laboratory in the UK has smashed the record for generating energy from a nuclear fusion reaction, an important breakthrough in the world of clean power. It's a big step towards harnessing the stars as a source of energy. Well, nuclear fusion is the holy grail of energy production because it might lead to a virtually unlimited source of low carbon power. Our climate editor, Justin Rolat, begins our coverage. Let's pick up on with some of those points from Justin's report with Saskia Mordic, who's an assistant professor in the Department of Physics at William and Mary Research University. Saskia, you've been working with labs throughout the world to solve this extremely complicated problem of refueling fusion reactor reactions. Um, in terms of what we have been hearing today, we're talking about a, a short space of time a small amount of energy that has been created, but put this into context for us as the equivalent of what powering 60 kettles, I think in, in the report there, just how significant is this for our futures? Oh my goodness, you end on a question. Thank you so much. We can sense your enthusiasm and excitement though. A fantastic day for uh, science. Professor Saskia Mordic, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much. Much more, of course, on our website. But now to India, because protests are spreading across India. It is against a ban on the Muslim headscarf in some colleges in one southern state. The controversy began when hijab-wearing students were denied entry to their schools in Karnataka. All high schools and colleges in the state have been shut down for three days. Well, protests have now spread to other cities, including Kolkata and Chennai, two of the country's largest cities, and Hyderabad. 
Well, the Pakistani government has criticized the ban and has summoned the Indian ambassador to formally express its concern. And Barasan Etherajan reports. Let's bring you up to date with some of the day's other news stories. The footballer Kurt Zuma has had two cats removed from his home after a video emerged of him mistreating them. The player has also been fined around a quarter of a million pounds by his club, with the money being donated to animal welfare charities. Sportswear firm Adidas have dropped their sponsorship deal with him. Anti-vaccine protesters have clashed with police outside of New Zealand's parliament on Thursday. Dozens were arrested after demonstrators who laid siege to the legislature over the past three days were ordered to move on. The protest began Tuesday in solidarity with the Freedom Convoy in Canada. The American singer Betty Davis, whose music has influenced generations of artists, has died at the age of 77. Davis enjoyed little commercial success during her career, but her raw, sexually handed songs from the 60s and early 70s won a cult following and paved the way for later artists such as Prince and Madonna. Canadian police have warned truck drivers that they'll be arrested if they continue their blockade of the capital, Ottawa. Automobile companies either side of the Canada-US border say that production is being hit by this blockade, while hundreds of trucks are lining the streets as drivers protest vaccine mandates for a second week. From Ottawa, Samira Hussein reports. Do stay with us here on BBC News. Still to come, not so modern man. The discovery in France that shows Homo sapiens may have arrived in Europe a lot earlier than we thought. Welcome back. You're watching BBC News. Our main headlines this hour. Two, one, zero. Scientists in Britain make a major new advance in the quest to generate energy from nuclear fusion. Protests spread across India and beyond against a ban on the Muslim headscarf in some colleges in one southern state. Coronavirus restrictions in England could end earlier than expected, according to the Prime Minister Boris Johnson. The rules are due to expire in March, but Mr Johnson told MPs the restrictions could be lifted by the end of this month as long as the data remained positive. There have been similar moves towards opening up in the United States, where some states are scrapping mask mandates. One of those is New York, where there's been a steep decline in COVID cases. Here's the Governor. Well, let's keep the focus on the United States because a new bill that would ban discussion of sexual orientation in primary schools in Florida has been criticized by the White House. People who oppose the Parental Rights in Education bill have dubbed it the Say No to Gay bill. They warn that it will stigmatize LGBT people and those issues. Supporters of the legislation, including Governor Ron DeSantis, say that it's about preserving the rights of parents. So reaction there. Let's cross over to Miami to talk to Scott Galvin, executive director of Safe Schools South Florida. It's a non-profit organization which focuses on providing safe spaces for the LGBTQ young community. Uh, this bill, it's got two more committees to go through, um, yeah. Scott, and it's believed that it, it will sail through these two um, more stages. What will it bring from your understanding? Scott Galvin from Safe Schools South Florida, thank you. Thank you, thanks for having me. Now a discovery in a cave in France shows that modern man arrived in Europe some 12,000 years earlier than previously thought. Palab Ghosh has more. And we built on that knowledge more effectively than the Neanderthals would. To think networking pulled us through, thanks for watching. Hello, welcome to BBC News. I'm Kasia Madeira. Our main stories. Two, one, zero. 
scientists in Britain make a major new advance in the quest to generate energy from nuclear fusion. What we've managed to demonstrate inside JET is that we can create a mini sun, the right kind of mini sun, hold it there for a sustained period and get really good performance levels. Protests spread across India and beyond against a ban on the Muslim headscarf in some colleges in one southern state. Canadian police threatened to arrest lorry drivers who've shut down central Ottawa as anger at mandatory vaccines spreads. And two years of COVID restrictions are set to end in England. Rules are also eased in some parts of Europe and the US. Hello and a very warm welcome. A laboratory in the UK has smashed the record for generating energy from a nuclear fusion reaction, an important breakthrough in the world of clean power. It's a big step towards harnessing the stars as a source of energy. Nuclear fusion is the holy grail of energy production because it might lead to a virtually unlimited source of low carbon power. Well, our climate editor, Justin Rowlatt, begins our coverage. Let's discuss this further with Stephen Cowley, who's the director of the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory. And Stephen, I've got to put a disclaimer in because you actually previously were the director of the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy, where this most successful research took place. When you were there, were you, did, you, did you know that this was, that the team there would achieve this success? But crucial to be optimistic that this has happened. Stephen, thank you so much for all of your efforts in getting the team to this point and a huge congratulations to the teams themselves. Stephen Cowley, currently director of the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory. Thank you for your analogy as well. Jelly and wool, that is brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Good night. Lots more, of course, on our website. But now let's turn to India, where protests are spreading across the country. It's against a ban on the Muslim headscarf in some colleges in one southern state. The controversy began when hijab-wearing students were denied entry to their schools in Karnataka. And high schools and colleges in the state have been shut down for three days. Well, protests have now spread to other cities, including Kolkata and Chennai, two of the country's largest. The Pakistani government has been criticizing the ban and has summoned the Indian ambassador to formally express its concern. Ambarasan Etharajan reports. Canadian police have warned truck drivers they'll be arrested if they continue their blockade of the capital, Ottawa. Automobile companies either side of the Canada-US border say that production is being hit by the blockade. Hundreds of trucks are lining the streets as drivers protest vaccine mandates for a second week. From Ottawa, Samira Hussain reports. Do stay with us here on BBC News. Still to come, we'll be looking at the not-so-modern man, the discovery in France that shows Homo sapiens may have arrived in Europe a lot earlier than we thought. Welcome back. You're watching BBC World News. I'm Kesha Madeira. Our main headlines. Scientists in Britain make a major new advance in the quest to generate energy from nuclear fusion. Protests spread across India and beyond against a ban on the Muslim headscarf in some colleges in one southern state. Coronavirus restrictions in England could end earlier than expected, according to the Prime Minister Boris Johnson. The rules are due to expire in March, but Mr Johnson told MPs the restrictions could be lifted by the end of this month as long as the data remained positive. Well, in the US, New York State will lift its indoor mask mandate today as coronavirus cases continue to slip. Businesses like restaurants and gyms will no longer be required to have their customers put on masks. The BBC's Michelle Flurry has more from New York. Michelle Flurry there reporting from New York. We're going to keep the focus on the United States because a new bill that would ban discussion of sexual orientation in primary schools in Florida has been criticized by the White House. People who oppose the Parental Rights in Education bill have dubbed it the Say No to Gay bill. They warned that it will stigmatize the LGBT community and the issues they have. Supporters of the legislation, including the governor, Ron DeSantis, says that 
that it's about preserving the rights of parents. Scott Galvin speaking to me a little bit earlier. Now to a discovery in a cave in France which shows that modern man arrived in Europe some 12,000 years earlier than previously thought. Palap Ghosh reports. Extraordinary seeing those two skulls. Imagine just how old they are. And nice to see that networking got uh, us through. Lots more on our website. Get in touch with me via social media at BBC Kesha Madeira on Twitter. It would be great to hear from you. Bye bye. This is BBC News, I'm Kasia Madeira, our main stories. Two, one, zero. Scientists in Britain make a major new advance in the quest to generate energy from nuclear fusion. What we've managed to demonstrate inside JET is that we can create a mini sun, the right kind of mini sun, hold it there for a sustained period and get really good performance levels. Protests spread across India and beyond against a ban on the Muslim headscarf in some colleges in one southern state. Virus and the vote. Has global democracy become an unwitting victim of COVID-19? A new report suggests it might. Canadian police threaten to arrest lorry drivers who've shut down central Ottawa as anger at mandatory vaccines spreads. A warm welcome to our viewers on PBS in America and around the globe. A laboratory in the UK has smashed the record for generating energy from a nuclear fusion reaction, an important breakthrough in the world of clean power. It's a big step towards harnessing the stars as a source of energy. Nuclear fusion is the holy grail of energy production because it might lead to a virtually unlimited source of low carbon power. Our climate editor, Justin Rowlatt, reports. Now let's turn to India where protests are spreading across the country. It's against a ban on the Muslim headscarf in some colleges in one southern state. The controversy began when hijab-wearing students were denied entry to their schools in Karnataka. All high schools and colleges in the state have been shut down for three days. Protests have now spread to other cities including Kolkata and Chennai, two of the country's largest cities. Well, the Pakistani government has criticized the ban and has summoned the Indian ambassador to formally express its concern. Ambarasan Etherajan reports. Now, here in England, coronavirus restrictions could end earlier than expected. That's according to the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. The rules are due to expire in March, but Mr Johnson told MPs that the restrictions could be lifted by the end of this month as long as the data remained positive. The announcement took many by surprise and the opposition Labour Party have suggested that the move was an attempt to divert attention away from the controversy over Downing Street parties. Is global democracy under assault in the wake of coronavirus? Yes, says a new report examining 65 independent states and two territories. It says it's found the lowest numbers of people living in some sort of democracy for almost two decades. Well, my colleague Stephanie Prentice has been looking into the figures for us, Stephanie. So tell us a little bit more about the general findings of this report. Well, quite a jump. Stephanie, as always, thanks very much for talking us through that. A little bit of optimism there in that report. Stephanie Prentice there. Thank you so much. Stay with us here on BBC News, still to come on the programme. We'll be looking at the not-so-modern man, the discovery in France that shows Homo sapiens may have arrived in Europe a little earlier than we had thought. Hello and welcome back. You're watching BBC News, our main headlines this hour. Scientists in Britain make a major new advance in the quest to generate energy from nuclear fusion. 
protests spread across India and beyond against a ban on the Muslim headscarf in some colleges in one southern state. Canadian police have warned truck drivers that they will be arrested if they continue their blockade of the capital, Ottawa. Automobile companies either side of the Canada-US border say that production is being hit by the blockade. Hundreds of trucks are lining the streets as drivers protest vaccine mandates for a second week. From Ottawa, Samira Hussain reports. Now let's bring you up to date with some of the day's other news stories. The American singer Betty Davis, whose music has influenced generations of artists, has died at the age of 77. Davis enjoyed little commercial success during her career, but her raw, sexually candid songs from the 60s and early 70s won a cult following and paved the way for later artists such as Prince and Madonna. The main suspect in the 2015 Paris attacks, Salah Abdesalam, has told a French court he has not killed or injured anyone. 130 people died and many more were injured in an Islamist attack in the Bataclan concert hall. Mr. Abdesalam is believed to be the sole surviving member of the IS group. The footballer Kurt Zuma has had two cats removed from his home after a video emerged of him mistreating them. The player has also been fined around a quarter of a million pounds by his club, with the money being donated to animal welfare charities. The sportswear firm Adidas have dropped their sponsorship deal with him. Anti-vaccine protesters clashed with police outside of New Zealand's parliament on Thursday. Dozens were arrested after demonstrators who had laid siege to the legislature over the past three days were ordered to move on. The protest began Tuesday in solidarity with the Freedom Convoy in Canada. The U.S. National Archives has asked the Justice Department to investigate Donald Trump for his handling of official documents relating to his term as president. It comes days after the Archives said it had retrieved 15 boxes of papers that Mr. Trump should have turned over when he left the White House, but had instead taken to his Florida home. They include letters between Mr. Trump and the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and the presidential handover letter from Barack Obama. The former U.S. Republican vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin has been testifying in court against the New York Times. Ms. Palin sued the publication after a 2017 editorial linked her to a shooting that seriously wounded Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. The trial was delayed after Ms. Palin tested positive for COVID. A discovery in a cave in France shows that modern man arrived in Europe some 12,000 years earlier than previously thought. Our science correspondent Palab Ghosh has more. Just remarkable seeing those two skulls uh, together there. Lots more on our website on all of our stories. And don't forget our main story. Let's bring you a recap of that. Scientists saying they've made a breakthrough in their quest to develop practical nuclear fusion. It could eventually offer an almost unlimited source of low carbon power. The Jet Laboratory in Britain has broken its own world record for the amount of energy it can extract by squeezing together two forms of hydrogen. They, the output produced over five seconds. It's not huge, but researchers say it validates the design choices that they've made for a much larger fusion reactor being built in France. As always, more on all of our stories on our website. I'm on social media at BBC Cash and Madeira. Do get in touch with me and the team. Bye bye for now. Hello, in Europe, snow continues to pile in across western Norway, but elsewhere in northern Europe,